We, you know, it, we're not exposed to that as much as we should be. That, that that could be a deal. You never know. You never know. I'm just saying. You I, know. I know you are. E even here in Moriarty, the light pollution's a problem. You know. Is it? Really? Yeah, yeah. There's people. You know, oh, there's bummer. stupid freaking spotlights in front of their house and shit. Oh yeah. And, uh, well, I have a motion light on my garage because I have to walk between my garage and my house to get, you know, to get in my house. Yeah, some of these assholes just leave them on full time, though. Oh no, I have a motion one where it only comes on if there's motion. Right, right. You know, it shuts off at a certain time. And and I I think that's the way the street lights work around here is, and and so I I don't know where right. they put sensors, but it's got to be a good bit down the road. Yeah. So as a like a car, if a car is coming from the east, the, yep. then the, the lights to the west come on. See, and that's smart, because it saves money. It saves on electricity. Yeah. You know, it's better than running them all the time. So, yeah, so that's good. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I it, it was shy, like, you it, have to watch for your sign on that, because I live right next door to my neighbors. You know? they, they, like, they, those those people at the fireworks store. They they, they yeah. have these two spotlights always, you know, but they're. You know, I, oh, I would fucking be. They're, 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 to they're, go, a, they're a good I'll mile. I'll give you ten bucks if you fucking hit, take a rock and bust them out. They're, it's those big old spotlights, you know. They have it like, uh, I don't know, baseball, oh God, that baseball would drive me crazy. games or something. You know that they shine up Just in the air to show you. Graham, start a petition. No more yeah. spotlights. They they got they got they, they're a big they're a big business here so they, they, it, it, yeah it, I'm it, sure but I'm kidding it's it's a good I thing I mean no seriously it's like those big ones like the ones that like shoot the sky and stuff yeah you no know, that shoot the white you know the big old spotlights that they put in the sky like there's a special event going on they'll put one of them off yeah right well that, and that's what they do every, is that uh, what they're like yeah yeah every night they have, oh, they, God, have, they, have they have they have two spotlights you know like for the bat signal or something. Um, yeah. <laughs> and how far away is this from your house? It's probably a mile, but I can see them every oh, day. Oh, okay. Well, a mile is not far with those guys. Yeah, no. So they. So those they, are ridiculous. Yeah, those are ridiculous. So they, they just add a little bit to the, no, they first started using the overall that. light. You know, if there was, like, a haunted house going on. Or they did it for, like, the state fair, you know, because they thought it was really fucking cool to do that. You know what I mean? But meanwhile, all the neighbors around there are like, Really? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm yeah. right in the center of town here, so. Right, but still. Yeah. But that sucks. Oh, well, whatever. Yeah, you got to go to the sticks even where you live to see the freaking stars. Yeah, but my, my my sticks are much closer than your sticks. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> well, although I'm not far, I mean, Eau Claire is getting bigger, but it's not going to be a huge city. If I, if I, if like, I go... You know, if I go five miles east, there's nothing. Well, I can go five miles, and it's in farmland. I'm in farmland if I go down the right road, you know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's and oh my god, it's so amazing. <laughs> on the way to work on Highway 37, there's this farmer that lost his wife to cancer, and he's uh, farmers around the area have lent him their field so he could grow sunflowers, right? Okay. And then they take the sunflowers and they sell them and they, you know, are raising money or whatever. It's like a scholarship thing or something, you know, in this lady's honor. Anyway, the one field this year is on Highway 37, one of the bigger ones. Right. And it's just awesome. You drive by there, there's all these fucking sunflowers. It's just like so fucking cool. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like, if I lived in a major city, I would not see that shit driving to work every day. You know what I mean? So. You can grow it, your own, you can grow your own sunflowers. Oh, yeah, I could in my yard easily. There, there was right. some, there was some growing here when I first moved in. Right. Yeah. They're, they're pretty easy to grow. I mean, they're, you know, yeah, they're, 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 they're just a big, plants. it's a big weed. <laughs> they're hardy plants, right. They're, they're just hardy. Yeah. Yeah. But they look, when they're all, like, in a huge field like that, and they're all facing the road, like, the, the faces of the flowers are facing the road. It looks so cool, dude. Yeah, it is cool. That's cool. Yeah, it looks so cool. So, let's say hi to everybody in the chat. Yeah, let's do that. Hi, everybody in the chat. Hello, everyone <laughs> in the chat room. Hope yeah. you're having a wonderful Freaky Friday so far, and yeah. um, 
it's the weekend, so woohoo! Yeah. I don't have to work for two days. Well, okay, it's really one and a half days that I get off because I work today, but I don't work tomorrow. So I really only get one full day off, which is Saturday. Sunday I get the full day off, but I have to work on Monday, so you don't really get the full, you know what I mean? Right. It's not like a sure, Saturday. Sure. It's a Sunday, you know. Now, but, now um, if um if uh if I needed to buy anything expensive like a computer or whatever yeah. this would be the weekend here to do that. This is Why? this is the uh annual no tax weekend. Oh, they're doing that here. Walker yeah. Walker made this thing, they're doing it here because of back to school and everything. Right, like right. They've been, they've, been do, they've been doing it here as long as I've lived here. Oh, okay. So, but they're doing that here, a tax-free week or month or something. Because it's just the weekend. It's just, you just get the weekend. You get two days. Oh, okay. Maybe that's the same thing here, but I'd have to look it up. I will look that up um, right now. But anyway, um, oh, yeah, we're going to save you some money, people. Oh, we're so awesome. <laughs> well, it's for here, it's anything that could possibly be used at a school. Trust uh, yeah. Rome's. Um, right, yeah, that's what it's for. It's for back to school. So if you're going to buy, like, a tablet or a computer or a printer. Right. Well, well here, here's, here's what they were talking about on the radio the other day. Okay, you can buy a printer, and that's covered. Right, and you can, okay. You can buy a printer with, with a built-in scanner in it, and that's covered. Okay. But if you buy a scanner, that's not covered. What? <laughs> I crazy. don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, who the hell comes up with this? Right. Why don't you just say everything? Should they should just make everything tax-free, you know, like furniture right. and just make it be cars. Everything. Why not? They, they, they should make every, every single thing. Yeah, uh, it's like, oh, it's always certain items. Yeah, it's ridiculous, the, you know, the, yeah, the delineation uh, between the it's, <laughs> like, yeah, it's what's crazy. covered and not. Wow. No, no, Woody, if it was up to the liberals, there would be no tax-free anything ever. <laughs> right. Be, no, we got a tax, we got a tax every day. It would be double tax every day. Yeah, we got, we got a tax at all. You know, they're taxing uh, us to death. They're, they're nickel and diming us to death. That's how I liken it to, because the food, everything goes up, but your wages don't keep up as fast as the price is increasing, so you're always in a state of fucking... Money wall, you know, money worry or whatever. You know, how am I going to pay the bills? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? You know, and then it, it, it causes worry and stress. And that's what they want. They want you to be worried and stressed. And it's like, I get it because you're easier to control when you're worried and stressed out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it's easier to push those big pharma beds onto you. Oh, sure. You know, oh, take a pill, or are you worried and stressed out? Oh, here's a pill for you. <laughs> you know, it'll give you all these other side effects, but, you know, you're, you're going to, basically, it's going to numb you. So you'll feel nothing. <laughs> you know? Right, I mean, right. it's like, okay, let's give that to a sexually active 20-year-old. Oh, that's the last thing for depression I would recommend is no sex at all. Or if you do have it, you don't feel anything. What the fuck is that? Exactly. I mean, come on. <laughs> Numbing people is not the fucking answer, all right? Making them new zombies is not the fucking answer. No. And it's, it's going to make them worse. It's going to make them sadder and more depressed. See, that's right. just, this, you know, it's just like they want us to be sick or worried or stressed out or zombified on their fucking big pharma meds and paying all this shit out of the ass for every fucking thing, you know, paying to fucking breathe for crying out fucking loud, just about. You know, oh, you use water, you know, when anyone with a fucking brain knows the biggest user and biggest polluter is the military-industrial complex. Sure. They're the biggest waster of all this shit. Oil? Fuck. They waste the fuck out of it. Yeah, and, and, and they gets, just... Oh, you know. oh, no, it's the consumers. It's, oh, no, it's the people. You know, you guys are using way too much fucking gas. 
or whatever. You're using my, you know, it's like, come on, fuck you. Right. Fuck you, dude. You know, come on. I know, I know. <laughs> All right, let's kick off some jams here. And, All right, uh, let's do that. We'll, we'll, we'll come back and, and uh, talk about it's more stuff. It's a Freaky Friday. What's that again? It's a Freaky Friday, but pretty much every day is a, a freaky day. Oh, that's right. I mean, it's, it's a freaky like, world, and this is... You just don't know what the fuck is coming around the bend. Sometimes. You can kind of predict some of this stuff, but some of the stuff is just like, oh, fucking no fucking. Yeah. Okay, so enjoy, people. We'll be back. That's <laughs> right. Oh. And, uh, what, what is this? Oh, never mind. <laughs> enjoy. I want to say thank you to the Black Big Pickers for making the trip up from Virginia. That's right, Chicken Man. <laughs> Billy F. Gibbons uh, rolling in the tumbling. Yes, indeed. And before that, we had Joe Bonamassa with the King Bee Shakedown off of his new album, the, the Redemption album, which will be coming out in next month. And uh, then we kicked it off there with Charlie Parr and the Black Twig Pickers doing Ain't No Grave. Ain't No Grave going to hold me down from Boats and Bluegrass back in 2013. So, good stuff across the board. Oh, I forgot to oh, change, yeah. got to change my camera. <laughs> no, I'm on pause. What the hell? You're on, you're on pause? What do you mean? The player. The player. No, no, no. I forgot to change the camera. Oh, okay. <laughs> what the hell is going on here? Yeah, it's, it was me. <laughs> I gotta, okay. You know, well, good it, to know, because I'm like, you know, I'm so, my, my system is so touchy. I, I, I got to like, flop the camera around between between things. Oh, okay. Now. Yeah, I, I know. I know how it goes. I've done live broadcasts where I was the one... <laughs> I, sta control. I, start I started yapping and I, and I forgot. It happens. It you know. does. It's fine. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I got, it's like, owning a home is a great thing, but it's also a burden. It is. It's responsibility. In a way, because you have to maintain it, and you have to pay your property tax, and you have to pay your homeowner's insurance, and you ha you must do all these things if you own a home. Otherwise, you're dumb. Right. If you don't have insurance on your home, that is just foolish. You know, because especially if you have a lot of equity built up into your home, and it burns down to the ground, and you don't have insurance, you're fucked. Oh, sure, sure, sure. You know, and I know it's a scam. I know all about it. Don't look and sit there and go, oh, you know, I know it. But at the same time, it's a necessity. Right? Right. Like, if I don't pay the property tax, I don't want the IRS coming and knocking on my fucking door. Well, it won't be know? the IRS. It'll be the county. Uh, yeah, the county. Right, right. Not the IRS. So that's a different kind of tax. But yeah. I'm, I'm not, it's not income tax. It's fucking property tax. Right. That's who gets the money is the county. Right. Exactly. Yes. And it's like, are you kidding me? I mean, it's just under $3,000. You know? That's expensive. Yep. And they are working on the roads around here, right? Like, not on my main road here, but all around our neighborhood. And if you remember back in uh, February or something, there was a huge sewer main break where 80 homes got had raw sewage go into their basements. Sure. And it was like a block away from the house, you know. And um, so I noticed that they're replacing a lot of those pipes that are going from the house to the street. Right. Not that pipe. The pipe that is at, is where from the one from the house to the street goes. They're replacing those pipes there. In, under the street, basically, is where they are. They're not yeah. the, the main one that goes from the house to the street. They're the ones that they, that, those, that connects to. You know what I mean? Right. And because, and it's like, good. You know, because I pay $3,000 a fucking year to the fucking county, they should be doing this shit. Road, you know? yeah, yeah. I drive down my fucking street here a block and a half. It's a residential neighborhood. So we're talking those sides, right? 
Right. And you get to the end where the stop sign is, and it's a total pothole. I mean, it's it's bad. You can't avoid it because it's like it's not just one hole, little hole. It's a fuck. It's the whole thing's like corroded there, and it's sure. breaking down there, and it breaks down in that spot because everyone stops there, right? And then they we use salt in the winter time, and in a, in our in our we have to use salt and sand here, otherwise there would be way too many accidents. You know what I mean? And death. Oh right, right. In the winter, if we did not use this, right? You have to use it here. And so that eats away the fucking materials that they use for the road over time, right? Sure. So I'm hoping to hell they're going to fucking do that road, you know, that street, because it's like, dude, there's a huge pothole here. I mean, I drove there tonight, and it's like the car, like, it it fucks up your alignment. And I was driving out of town two weeks ago, and on Highway 29, which is a major highway, it's a two lanes in both directions, right? Right. And you can go 75 or whatever, because the speed limit's 65. Okay. But I hit this fucking pothole, and it I swear to God, I could feel the alignment in my car getting fucked up. You know? Oh, yeah. And that, it'll, you'll also eat your tires. I mean, it, and... and it sucked because I was in the left lane, and you know how you're supposed to be in the right lane and use the left lane just for passing? Right. Or whatever? So I'm like, I change lanes. I go, okay, I'm supposed to be in the right lane, or I should be, right? Bad idea. Because, you know, a mile down the road, I hit that fucking hole, and it's fucking... Good thing I have my hands on the steering wheel, because that's how much it jolted my car. You know what I mean? Sure. I'm like, that ain't fucking good. If a semi fucking hits that, it's going to fucking jack me. Possibly. You know what I mean? Yeah, maybe. They got a lot more. I mean, Christ. I'm like, why don't they fucking fix that shit? You know, it's like, you know, people have probably called and complained, or the, or the state patrol drives down that that road, you know, that high, that freeway or whatever. Sure. You mean to tell me they've never noticed that? Well, you know what you got to do is you you got to call Domino's. <laughs> They'll come out and fix your potholes. <laughs> what? Domino's. The pizza place? Yeah, yeah. No, you're crazy. No, I'm not. I talked about it here. I mean, you must have been off off that week. Yeah, I yeah I remember a little bit about the Domino's thing. Yeah, yeah. They they come and they go go to people's towns and they fix the fix the fucking potholes because government's lame and 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 Domino's says we're gonna make it so your pizza gets to your house safe by fixing the potholes. <laughs> okay then. It's serious though. They're actually doing it. They're out there. With... Well, good. Construction then I will. I and, should call them up and say, "Hey." <laughs> yeah. You know, well, I don't know exactly where it was. I think I do. I think it was by like. Well, you just call them and tell them to thing. come to Eau Claire and and, and fix the sp- No, it was out of town. I was well, going I, out of town. I was driving. It wasn't in Eau Claire. It was yeah, down. I, I, I don't like, know what in, they can do out no. on the highway, but they can. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, no, but it you know it's stuff like that. And if your car goes out of alignment, you gotta fucking get it fixed because, especially if it's a newer car, if it's not, you just say fuck it, you know. Well, but yeah. out of alignment car, where's your tires down faster and stuff? I mean, oh yeah, those I, those potholes yeah. will those potholes will fuck up your tires. They will. They'll fuck up your car, your alignment. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I could feel it. It was like I could feel the fucking steering column like. Jolting a little bit. It's like, oh, that can't be fucked up in my car. No. You know, it's like, fuck me. You know, it's like, the, you know, we pay all this money in taxes, and we pay all this money to the DMV. You'd think they'd fucking, you know, everyone's, oh, who's going to, yeah. Right now, the government's basically in charge of hiring the people to fix the roads, and they're doing a piss poor fucking job. Absolutely. So, let's just say, let's just fucking get the government out of fixing the fucking roads. Sure. Well, sure. who will do it then? <laughs> My roads. <laughs> who will do it? Who will do it? Yeah. Anyway, uh, I, I know you guys, you and Kate and some others, Rome's, whoever, been talking about that girl Molly Tibbetts. Yes, we have. So, so here's the story. Okay. Missing college student Molly Tibbetts is one of dozens to disappear this month. She's not alone. Yeah. Anyway, the 20-year-old college student missing in Iowa is one of 48 young people who have yeah. vanished in that only just that one state this month. 
In Iowa? Yeah, 48 people. I saw another thing that said that wasn't true. But well, maybe here it is. I'm reading it. It's on the NewYorkPost.com. Okay. Uh, the, the seemingly alarming number of missing person cases has sparked widespread panic, not the band, yes. not the band, on social media, <laughs> and a flood of conspiracy theories, and they didn't even come right. from me, uh, as as the search intensifies for Molly Tibbetts. Uh, anyway, it says 40 people have gone missing in Iowa in 10 days. 40 oh. people. How is this possible? That's crazy. Posted. Well, we know, right, Graham? Oh, we know. It's the aliens. We know. It's sure. the aliens. Yeah. You have abduction. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a big abduction season. Iowa is huge for UFOs because it's so wide open. There's not a lot of trees there. They can land in them cornfields. They can be basically in that. The corn is 8 feet tall this year in Iowa. 8 yeah. to 10 feet tall. And they can just land down there. And they do, I do believe, in crop circles. And I believe that is alien activity, the crop circles. You guys can say, oh, no, it's some farmer. No, bullshit. They're too intricate to be anything but alien activity. Okay? That's yeah. my take on it. I mean, and I do believe in Bigfoot and a lot of us monster. So, there and you go. More and more on this, uh, added Heather Loshaw on her local Facebook group. What the hell is going on here? Please be right. careful. Right. What the be, hell? Be careful out there. Another one says... Don't think it can't happen to you, added Shannon Kelly on Twitter in a post. Right. Uh, that was shared and, thousands of times. It's happening you know, across about, rural and right. urban Iowa. So it's, Yeah, and the thing about Molly, Molly's case is that, yes, she did go out jogging. At first it was assumed that she got taken or whatever or got went missing while she was jogging. Not true. She did go back. She was watching the boyfriend's dogs at their at the boyfriend's brother's house, and the boy, her boyfriend lived there too. The brothers, two brothers lived there, whatever. Okay. And she was babysitting these two dogs, and we, you know, we don't know what kind of dogs they were. They haven't said that, but we did see a picture with two dogs in it, and they were bigger dogs. They weren't small dogs. And so, and plus, it's a small town in rural Iowa, right? The, kid, the the boyfriend even said, we do not lock our doors here. Which is like, dude, you should have said that. <laughs> you know? Well, but anyway, uh, according to this, it uh, says it's rural and urban Iowa, so it's happening in the cities, too. Okay. Well, but in Iowa, their cities aren't that big. Well, some of them. They, got they don't have a city the size of New York or Chicago. No, no, of course not. Iowa, but, you know. <laughs> they do have some some good, you know, 100,000 plus cities. And, you know... Ames, even. I've been to Ames, which is where I... It, I've been to Iowa City, too. Yeah. I've been to Ames and Iowa City. And they're not... I mean, Iowa City is a big 10 color song. But it, it's probably grown by now. I mean, the last time I was there was like 20... You know, 30 years ago, or whatever, you know. So. Right. But anyway, there was no sign of struggle in the house. And, you know, if she's watching dogs, unless that a dog knows who you are... They're going to fucking bark or do something, right? Right. So, Hopefully. I, you know, the alien abduction theory isn't bad because well, aliens can, can traumatize or can, like, make a dog be frozen or something. Sure, you know, sure, can, sure. You know. sure. And it's like, but my, th my take on that also was it could be someone else in that town that knew she was babysitting, watching them dogs and knows those dogs, and it's someone from the fucking town. Okay, well, because here, let's, let's, there was no sign of struggle, and those dogs would have alerted if it was danger, unless they were crated or kenneled or maybe put in the garage. They couldn't see someone coming into the house. You know what I mean? Sure. You know, it's weird because she. It's weird that it happened there, because that is such right, a well, rural. There's like fifteen hundred <laughs> people or whatever or less live there. Everybody knows everybody there. Yeah. It's a farm town. Well, here, here, listen to listen to this bit here. Okay. The Iowa Department of Public Safety has received many calls about the missing person statistics mm -hmm. since Tibbetts' disappearance, but right. the department tried to quell the panic by clarifying yep. that the number isn't unusual. See, that's what I heard. <laughs> See, okay, so this is weird. And, yeah. and and not all of the cases are are kidnappings or sex trafficking related. So. Right. It's not unusual for that many people to go missing every month. That's weird. And we're in Iowa because it is such a rural farming state. I mean, it's, it's basically it's a farm state. It, it, yeah. 
Anyway, it says last year alone, 4,311 young people were reported missing. What? To to the missing 40, person. 4,000? Well, some of those are runaways and stuff, Graham. Well, I, I'm sure you some You know, are. that can't be abductions. No, that, that some of that shit's runaways. I mean, Christ. Okay. It's rural Iowa. Okay, well, it, it goes boring. on. It goes it's on. It's boring as fuck there. I mean, it, it goes on to say out. that. There's nothing to do. <laughs> it goes on what? to say. It goes on to say the vast majority of those were, are found and returned home within 24 hours. See, there you go. Uh, which does include runaways. So, okay. Um, so that number is skewed. This article is trying to make it seem like there's, you know, 4,000 people going missing. No, but, the, but the, you again. know, 48 people in a month, that, that seems like a lot. That is, that is significant for one state. And, and it doesn't state or specify whether that 4,300 right. is is nationally or or what. Right, right. But, but, but the other number, the 48 in a month, is in Iowa. That um, is significant. Uh, I think it is. I, it That's seems... alarming. I would be like, what the fuck? Is it's... there a serial killer going around or what? Is, is there really alien activity going on here? Well, I mean, you know. I, it's crazy. It's just it's just freaky to me. I mean, I know this happens a lot, and this is just one case out of many, but it's just hitting home for me because she's 20 years old. She's from fucking Iowa. I mean, it... it, it it's just sad, and and it is sad for anybody that's going through this, and when it happens to anybody. I'm not trying to diminish other people's situations. So here, here's what I gotta wonder. What? Okay. If she wasn't a cute white girl. <laughs> you know. We're, it wouldn't maybe garner as much attention, but the family has really been active in getting it out there, and I think they, the family played a huge role in getting the information out there right away. You know, and I think, and I, it is, it's grasping people's attention because she is a wholesome girl, and you know, and it's from Iowa, where, you know, supposedly this stuff's not supposed to happen there. You know, but if she was, she was actually town in Iowa, four hundred people, you know, fifteen hundred people or less live there. Everybody knows everybody's business. Everybody knows everybody there. But but if it's she just was weird. It had she, to either be a stranger or someone that lives in the town. Obviously, I mean, there's you know, or she came upon you know she was got an accident. If she was something. actually wearing this Fitbit that they're talking about, yes, they should be able to track her down in a minute. Well, they that's why they they did. They they supposedly said they had the data. They that's why they searched that hog farm or whatever. Yeah, so well, but they didn't jog by there. Well, yeah, jog by there, but I mean the thing would still tell her tell them where she's at if she, if she still had it. It, but unless it's turned off, well, I think. they, they should have either been work. been able to find it or her. But and the same with the cell phone though. They said it's either off or on a battery or whatever. They they can't trace it once it's off supposedly. Yeah. Which I believe that. Anyway, but, I guess they checked her boyfriend and her brothers. <laughs> yes, she, they did. They interviewed the brothers. I mean, they, they always interview the people closest to the, the the person, you know. And. Anyway, it, but what what about the other? What about the other forty seven? How come we don't know about them? Right, we don't hear about that. It's like okay, well, you're. Gonna, Someone has to be out there. Some reporter's got to go to Iowa and fucking research this shit and get down to the bottom of it and say, what the fuck? I mean, and I know that there's stories out there of alien abductions in Iowa. Like I said, it's a perfect spot for the aliens or the, the crafts to land there. That's why the crop circles are always in a farm field, because they can't land in a fucking goddamn forest, dude. You know, some of these crafts are fucking huge. Sure. Well, they, what they do is they do they hide, they make fake clouds, like the mothership, you know. Yeah. And then they have these other little smaller crafts that come down to do the exploring. Well, those smaller crafts can't land in a fucking forest with all these huge trees. They gotta have open, open, you know. But they can fucking land in a cornfield, no problem. They don't need to land. They can just beam me up. Or whatever they do, they don't. Right? They just <laughs> hover or whatever. And but that's what probably creates the cross circle. 
is when they're hovering and they're knocking that corn down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I would be interested, it, if you really want to delve into it, we should really actually be looking at conspiracy sites going, any, any recent crop circle activity going on in Iowa lately. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because it's the time of year for it because it's, the, the corn is high right now. Sure. It's eight to ten feet high, especially in Iowa. And it's, you know, that's probably what creates those crop circles. They probably do different patterns on the bottom of the, the vessels, so it creates a different pattern every time. Yeah, I don't know. I've heard those were done by orbs. What? I've heard they were done by orbs. What do you mean? Explain that. Like You know, light light orbs. Oh, okay. That, that could be. That come down and, and do that. Uh, of course, those light orbs are probably sent down by, by you know. They're probably small little tiny craft. They're, they're like, Here, you know, like. They're, they're, they're we'll probably, make it the size of cornfield. We're going to fuck with their heads. <laughs> the, or, the orbs are probably drones from the UFO. Probably. Yeah. Yep. There you go. There's another theory. I mean, <laughs> you know, theories could be endless, right? Oh, absolutely. We don't know. We don't know I mean, nothing. We don't know. No. But they, I, I do have, I mean, like the one famous case where the couple, the married couple, was abducted. Betty and Barney Hill? Yes. That case is compelling. I, I believe that that fucking happened to them. I, do oh, I, I, don't, I have no doubt that happened to them. Yeah, I, I'm sure it did. Yeah. And that was kind of the kickoff of all this. You know, they were like the the first people to you know come out and talk about it or whatever. Right, and and Whitley Strieber, he's a multiple abductee. Um, yep. And and he's he's. Uh, I think once they get you, they want you again. <laughs> you know some I mean? some people, <laughs> I think some people are only a one timer and they say, eh. Nah. It could be, but yeah. then some people they're really interested in and they really want to do more research on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Whatever for whatever reason, I don't know. You know, I mean, if you think about it, human beings, are the same same way. Sure. We want to do research on shit that we don't know about. We want to fucking learn about shit we don't know about. It's not like it's abnormal behavior, because you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, it's just like uh, human beings are the same fucking way. Humans experiment on all kinds of various animals, right. and we're just as curious and we're just as crazy, and you know. And I, you can't tell me that aliens don't have a sense of fucking humor. No, and, and I mean, if you were, you know, you know some... Crop circles, that's probably just to fuck with our heads, I mean... Maybe, maybe it's something in their language that they want us to understand and we just don't get it. It could be. And, they're, and, they're and, and, and maybe they figure, they figure that, okay, once people can figure out what these are, then, uh, then we'll be able to talk to them. But until then, right. fact, we'll yeah. just take them up here and stick probes in them. <laughs> And we'll try to ingrain it into them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, you got that fucking crop circle serum over there? <laughs> right. Okay, well, here, listen to this wonderful story. That Okay. Uh, it's like it's deja vu all over again. Yeah. Uh, July, uh -huh. July 31st, 2018. State of emergency in Michigan after public discovers entire town has toxic water. Okay. <laughs> so which one now? Which, uh, which town this time, Grim? See, Michigan officials declared a state of emergency after high levels uh, of polyfluoroalkyl oh substances PF, PFAS were discovered in Kalamazoo, Kalamazoo County tap waters. Um, the declaration was made by the Lieutenant Governor Brian Kelly several days after the toxic compound was found in the water supply of Parchment and Cooper Townships. Uh, the declaration will allow the state to supply additional resources to help with the response effort and ensure the health and safety of residents of Parchment and Cooper Township. And what's the cause of this? Uh, I, think, I think it gets to that down here below this. Oh, okay. okay. And read it for like five days or so. Uh, anyway, Callie said in a statement, this helps make sure that every resource is available and possible on the table, and we can work as expeditiously as possible as we can. Of course, they never did clean up Flint, but anyway. Um, no, they didn't, really. <laughs> That's still an ongoing thing. 
State and local officials and members of the community have been working full in full partnership to ensure that people in the area have safe water in the short, medium, and long term. Officials detected a concentration of 1,587 parts per trillion of PFAS substances, while the EPA's mac maximum recommended dose is 70. There's a dose, they're going to dose you with it, uh, is 70 parts <coughs> per trillion. So they're about uh, 22, part, 22 times the, over the limit. Um, recent research by the Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry, however, suggests that single-digit levels of the compound can cause health problems. Single-digit can cause health problems, but they allow you 70 parts. So, uh... <laughs> Great! Thanks a lot, uh, man! It, it did talk about where this comes from. It is, uh, supposedly, it's like a banned... Uh, that can't be good for me, but thanks, buddy! It's a banned substances, um... Okay, That's just the uh, illusion uh, that they do. Oh! Oh, a little bit won't hurt you. A twenty. Fuck you, dude. <laughs> here, get drink this. some water and tell me if it won't hurt you. You drink it first. Get, get this I, here. I, I dare you. Get, get this here. A 2013 analysis of data collected in 2007. So it already took them six years from 2007 to 2013 to analyze some data. Found that 20% yeah. of the U.S. water supplies contain PFOA, a more dangerous form of PFAS, while 28% of the water supplies have some form of the contaminant in perfluorinated compound uh, family, according to Quartz. So, back in 2013, five years ago, they studied data from six years before that and found that 20% of the entire U.S. water supply contains this PFOA substance, which is a more dangerous form of what this town now has that Jesus <laughs> Christ! So by, by the time they get around to identifying that there's these uh, dangerous substances in your water, you're you're all fucking sick or dead. That's right. Why. <laughs> it's like you've already been exposed to it how long, and now they're just they're telling you. Great, thanks, man. <laughs> way way on Come down on. the line, uh, yeah. <laughs> Come on, this is the insanity and ass nine no, no. fucking bullshit. Your government loves you. Trust your government. Oh yeah, they love me. Fuck off. <laughs> they love you long time. Yeah, uh, yeah. Right, right up the sucky, ass. Don't lose. Sucky, yeah, sucky, fuck five dollar. <laughs> five dollar. I love you long time. You want it? You want it? No lube. Okay, no, no. Anyway, that's on okay, no the, the antimedia.com via Zero Edge. Oh, boy. All right, let's uh, hear some more music right here right now. Yes. Oh, my God. You got to Oh, my God. I hope, I, I hope this, I'm sure it's going to be a good set, but, I mean, it's it's insanity. This is why I do this show. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My unwinding. I made it through another week. Not going to work. That's right. Enjoy, people. All right. Well, this first one we got coming up is brand new from the band Nashville Pussy. Yeah, I do it. A little more Billy Gibbons there for you. Billy Gibbons with the supersonic blues machine over there in Germany doing La Grange. Uh, that's from uh, June, July 11th. They, they, they do their, their dates weird over there. Anyway, uh, yeah, July 11th, uh, so just uh, less than a month ago. Anyway, before that, before that, we had the Ballroom Blitz, as done by the three Leos, <laughs> no, it's all just one Leo, but it's uh, it's funny. Leo Maraccioli. And we kicked it off with Nashville Pussy off of their new and upcoming album, which comes out September 21st. And the song is called We Want a War. Uh, and the new album is going to be called Pleased to Eat You. <laughs> oh, great. Nice. Nashville Eating Pussy. Zombies or something? What's that again? Is that a reference to zombies or something? I don't think so. The band is called Nashville Pussy. Oh, okay. Okay, never mind. <laughs> True. True. Yeah. No, I'm pretty sure it's a, 
a different I went a reference. Different direction. It's a different reference. <laughs> <laughs> So there's this shelter, this animal shelter that's a no-kill shelter in a county, a couple counties away, probably about uh, 40 minutes, 40 minute drive or so, 45 minutes maybe. Yeah. And they have a ton of dogs there. Okay. And see how I pick a dog is I pick a dog of one that wants, that relates to me. Like, I wait for the dog to come to me or pick me, you know what I mean? Right. I don't, like, we went and saw this dog last week at the Humane Society. It was a young pit bull that came in as a stray. And it had no, like, it didn't want nothing to do with people at all. All it wanted to do was chew on its leash, you know. And it was young, it was a puppy, so it was, like, teasing or whatever. Right. But it, like, didn't interact with you at all. It didn't even look at us, or, you know what I mean? I'm like, okay, no, this dog is not going to work for me, you know. And for one thing, Zach, I, mean, I had Zach with me, and I tried to, like, hold the leash and control the dog. Like, the person that at the Humane Society, she had a hard time to control. Because he was a, you know, not tall dog, but a fucking muscular pit bull, right? Right. And it's like, Zach, Zach had a hard time even holding him. I'm like... I'm like, Zach, when they took the dog away, I'm like, that is not the dog from me. For one thing, you guys go on a college. For another thing, I need a dog that I can control. If this dog's going to be like this, I can, I mean, obviously it needed to be his test or whatever, you know. But still, I'm like, I, this is not the dog from me. I'm like, you could barely control that dog. I can't have a dog that's going to be like dragging me down the fucking sidewalk, you know. Right. It's like, you got to pick the right dog for your family at the right time. You know, sure. right now... The boys are home. I mean, we had a dog before. They got home from school at, like, 3 o'clock. They could let our dog out, right? You know? Right. So the dog, I have to work. I'm away from home nine hours a day, you know? Yeah. You have to get, and they're going to be going to school. It's like, Zach's like, I like that dog. I'm like, dude, you're not going to be the one taking care of it, you know? Right, exactly. So you have to make smart choices. But, you know, it, it's in the best interest of your family and the animal. You know? Oh, yeah. So what I'm saying is when I go to, a, like, a shelter or whatever, I wait for the, you know, the dog to connect with me. You know, or look me in the eye or whatever. You know what I mean? Right, Or right. make some kind of indication that they like me. You know? <laughs> you know? Sure, sure. I mean, because dogs are a very good judge, judge of character. They are. They tend to be. They're, right. They're, what? They tend to be. Yep, they're a very good judge of character, and you don't want a, jo a dog that you just can't relate to. You know what I mean? You have to have a dog that you connect with. I mean, obviously, that's that's key. So if I go to this humane society there in another county that has a lot more dogs than the humane society in my county, I'm odds are I'm going to find one out of sixty dogs they have there. I mean, I would at least find one dog that I could. That would like <laughs> maybe not, but I think out of sixty dogs, one of them's gonna like me. You know. Sure. And I, you know, Zach's like, "Oh, mom, you need a dog." I'm like, "Yeah, maybe, you know, just for companionship or whatever." But I can't get a dog that I can't like. I don't want a huge dog that I can't lift up. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I don't want a dog that's 80 pounds, necessarily. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If I can't lift that dog, you know, what am I going to do if there's an emergency or something? You know? I mean, uh, you can figure it out, but, you know. Right, right. It's like, you got to think about them as part of your family, because they do. They are part of your family. They become part of your family. Marty was like my third kid. When, I mean, when we lost him, it was like losing a kid, you know. Yeah, no, that's that's always on the same level, maybe, but just about. You no, know? It, it, like, it is. It's really sad, you know. It's, it's, it is. It's very sad it's because so they're so loyal to you and so loving to you, and just you know what I mean. They bring. He brought so much to our family that so much joy and laughter. You know, I mean. Yeah. yeah. He was a character, and they become part of your family, and it is like a family member or a friend, you know? Right. And it was, you know, but now, you know, I know there's so many dogs out there that need a home, a good home, because being in a shelter sucks. It's got to be like prison to them, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, nope, no doubt. No and doubt. it's like, you know, the, 
one of these dogs came up from Arkansas and Tennessee, and it's like, they've been through hell, you know, oh, like, yeah. most likely. And it's like, I want to, that's why I don't want to spend, I won't go out and buy some purebred puppy from some breeder for $1,000 when there's all these other great dogs out there that need good homes that are, you know, you know what I mean? Sure. And I'd rather have a, a, an adult dog than a, a puppy. Because a puppy's a lot of work, and I work full time. You know what I mean? You need to be at home with your dog a lot when you have a puppy right. to train him. You know, uh, just just wait, a, just wait a few years till you right, right. You can do whatever. Yeah. But it's like, oh, I can't, I can't justify going out and buying some purebred dog from a breeder that's got you know, AKC papers or whatever. It's like, fuck, the best dogs I've ever had were not AKC. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. My, my, we got my, my, my fucking best, first my, dog from my, my, dog. My, we got, oh, sorry, Jim. Oh. My, my best dog was an AKC. Yeah, a Rottweiler. Yeah, he's, he was full blood, had papers. Yep. Yeah. No, I know, I'm not saying that they're bad dogs. I'm just saying, to spend the amount, of, I mean, he must, I don't know when you got them, what year it was, but, you know, they're really, it's really, it's like $1,000 or something to get, you know, to get what? A purebred AKC dog. Oh yeah, you know, he was, like, uh, I got a deal. He, I, he was a friend of mine. I, I, yeah. I gave him three hundred bucks. Don't say you got lucky there, then. You know, you got a deal. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, no, that's cool. I'm, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying I know how many rescue dogs there are out there, and. I feel so bad. I, you know, I, I would bring them all home if I could. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So they don't have to be in that fucking shelter. But and That was probably, what, 95, somewhere in there. Right, yeah. So times have changed since then. 93, somewhere, yeah. Right. And so, like, you see ads for dogs at Purebred Box, $1,000. It's like, sure. are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, and, and I'm sure, you know, rot, rotty pups are going around that price, too. 1000 Yep. 1200 you know, and the tough part now is, you know, like most of your homeowners insurance, they don't, they don't want you to have those dogs. Right. It's that's bullshit. That is, you know, and they always put a disclaimer on the ads to say this, because of the way this dog looks, this might not be okay with your homeowners. It's like fuck you. If I want a fucking dog, I get to have a dog. I will, I will tell the homeowners insurance. Yeah, I have a dog. It's a fucking Chihuahua. You know, they don't need to know what breed unless the fucking they come and physically look at your fucking dog. Oh, you know? I, just, I, just got, I just got a text from my friend Jeannie. I don't know yeah. where she, I don't know where she's at, but she's at a Keb Mo concert. Oh, nice. <laughs> she, she, thinking of you as I watch this Keb Mo concert, you're not at. <laughs> I bet. Yeah, way to rub it in there. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, way to make me feel like shit. I'm not at an awesome concert. Oh God! No, just giving you shit, Graham. You know. No, 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 no. She's awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, if you get a dog, just get a regular old mutt, just to. Yeah, that's a, what I want to get. Just a regular old mutt that you know, like I'll tell I will, I know what kind of personality of dog I want. I want a mellow dog. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure, sure. I want a dog that's not hyper. That doesn't, you know, I don't want a border collie, you know what I mean? Unless they're a mellow border collie, you know? Yeah, that's a rare thing. But, right, border collies, collies are not mellow. Yeah. No. So you have to, like, a, pick the breed that's right for you. It's like a, like a beagle or something that's kind of... Maybe a basset hound. Mm, you know, they're mellow. Be, basset hounds are mellow. Be, beagle basset <laughs> hound mix. Right, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be calm. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I have to have a. I want a dog that gets along with other dogs because that was an issue we had with Marty. I want to be able to take the dog places with me. You know, that's one thing. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, you gotta, you gotta socialize the dog for him to get along with other exactly, people. Exactly, right. Dogs. But then yeah. if you get an adult dog, they might not be properly socialized, like which is the case with Marty. Right, and and, so, and that's kind of the deal, you know. Like like uh, one dog I got, she she was a death row dog. She, yeah, she was on her last day there at the at the pound. They were gonna kill her the next yeah. day. Yeah. Oh, that and, sucks. Um, yeah. And so she was she was a great dog, but um, good. Yeah. But you know she wasn't she wasn't all that social with other dogs because right. I think she had you know had not had a good previous life. 
Right, that's what it was with Marty. Yep. Yeah, so, yeah, you, and you don't know. I, I mean, you get one out of there, and she was like 11 months or something when I got her, so. Yeah, well, she was still a puppy, so I'm surprised, if, you know, you, if you would have socialized her, she probably would have came around. No, I did. I mean, I, I did. You know, I, I bet. Yeah, took, I'm took sure her other did. places, and I watched other people's dogs. So I mean, there were other yeah. dogs hanging around, and right, she, she right. was okay. Uh, the, the, the Roddy was not real social, but they're not known for being social. So no, well, no, they're really loyal to Jack Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. they don't like strangers at all unless they know you do. Uh, they do not like you. Or cats or other That's dogs. That's with most or... dogs, though. Most dogs, you know, Roddy's have a tendency to be more like that, but. All yeah. dogs are really like that. Like, Marty was loyal to us. He fucking totally loyal. You know what I mean? Sure, sure. He just did not like anyone fucking with us. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's why they get they go freak out when the mailman or the fucking you know, newspaper man or whatever comes to your door. They don't like that. Who's this stranger coming to my fucking door? Right. It could be dangerous to my family. Absolutely. You know, they, that's why they freak out. They start barking because they're alerting you. <laughs> You know, they, hey, there's some fucking motherfucker coming up the fucking door. You know, I've never, I don't know who the fucker is. I have never smelled him because I, you know, I've never gotten close to him. So I don't know if he's good or bad. You know? Exactly. Like all I know is this motherfucker's coming to the door right now. That's <laughs> <You know? laughs> <laughs> so dogs. Are. They're awesome. Yeah. I yeah. love dogs. I mean, it's oh. like I miss having a dog. I really do. You know, oh, it took oh, me a while oh, to grieve over Marty. You know, but now. You know, it's like, okay, you know, I can have another dog, you know. Yeah. Well, all, all dogs like me, so I'm, I'm good. It don't dogs matter. love me. Uh, I've never had You know, had these people, they say, oh, my, my dog's not real good around strange people. And then yeah. I'm per they're people perfect with me. me. And it's like, I don't see a problem. What's wrong with that? <laughs> yeah, I walk in the house, and I'm fucking like, ah! Yeah. You know, dogs love me, dude. Seriously, yeah. my brother's dog, he, she loves me. Like, she, don't, she might not see me for like six months. And she fucking knows me, though. You know what I mean? They know you by your smell. Sure, sure. They have a great sense of smell. Yep. And yep, so dogs. they know you by... That's how they know you. Do that's why dogs, dogs smell each other's awesome. assets, because they have scent glands in their... next to their anuses. <laughs> and so they're really not smelling each other's asshole. They're smelling each other's scent glands. Yeah, well, either way. You know, but it looks like they're <laughs> <laughs> So, oh god! All right, let's go. Let's let's, let's, let's let's cover some news stories here. Yes. <laughs> this is this first one. It's a it's a public service announcement, uh, and and I'm sure it might affect somebody. I hope none of you all, but it might affect somebody. <laughs> CDC warns people. Not to wash and reuse condoms. Oh, I heard about this today. <laughs> this is crazy. This is nuts, people. Do not do this. Do not reuse condoms. You're dumb if you do. You're asking for trouble. Apparently, it needs to be said. Don't uh, wash this or is, reuse. Doesn't, should not need to be said. Don't anyway. use. Don't wash or reuse a condom. The Center for Disease oh, Control and Prevention issued a warning and reminded sexually active individuals to use a new condom for each sex act. We say it because people do it. The, uh, the oh advice... my God, really, people? <laughs> the advice was issued as the number of sexually transmitted diseases is on the rise. According to the CDC, cases of chlamydia, gonorrhea, and the syphilis, the three most commonly reported conditions in the nation, all recently reached record highs. There were more than one and a half million chlamydia cases reported. I don't even know what that, where did that even come from? That, that, that chlamydia, made, it's, it's, that, it's like... Uh, it didn't exist back in, back in my day. It's, it's itchy. I don't know. Okay. Nearly 400,000 cases of gonorrhea. That was a big one. Uh, and yes. 20, 24,000 cases of primary and secondary cephalus, um, which that's nasty stuff. Um, that that goes after your brain and your eyes and yes, all kinds so of stuff. Syphilis, oh, that's bad. Yeah, shit. So, oh, yeah. Is nasty that'll fuck stuff. you up. Oh, I don't already get that. Um, yeah. Well, so yeah, don't uh, don't uh, don't wash and reuse your condoms because no, you, you know you're better off using a fucking 
non ziploc baggie. <laughs> if you don't have a condom, I'm not kidding. I believe you. I it's just, better than the or like saran what? wrap. <laughs> but saran wrap kind of sucks because it can unwrap. So the baggie is the better option there. But don't reuse it ever. <laughs> don't reuse any prophylactic ever. Oh, wait, where's ever. that other story? Like, yeah, come on. I didn't I mark that well, other anyway. story? I thought I had a, I had another I had another condom story and uh, I thought I'd marked it but Oh yeah. But I'm not seeing it. Where is it? Uh, okay, well it's it's it's, 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 it's 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 Okay. It, it, it over in uh in the UK. Yeah. Uh, what did I do with that story? Dang it. Um apparently over in the UK they've they've come out with 66 different sizes of condoms. What? <laughs> and mostly, mostly like they're little tiny condoms. <laughs> like you don't want to use too small of a condom. That could be bad. Because, well, I, I just, I just had to assume that. Well, this, this means that what they're saying is, is those, those Brit guys have tiny little dicks. Um, that's what they're saying. That's what. I'm, that's what. I, that's how I read it. And I, I thought. And speaking I'd, of that. <laughs> Right. An increase in STI cases reported in Eau Claire County. The Eau Claire County City Health Department said this uh, this year reports of sexually transmitted diseases have also referred to as STIs. I thought it was STDs, but whatever. Have already exceeded the total number for all of 2017. 75 reported cases of gonorrhea as compared to 64 cases last year. Really, people? Syphilis has already been reported 11 times. So it's still out there, Grim. All right, well, this is not, I, I found a different story about it. But okay, it, here's not, the, okay, go ahead. It, 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 whatever, I'll just give you the link to it. Um, it this one says, just says, what comes in 66 sizes of vegan latex? They were talking about that on the radio show this morning, about the reusing condoms thing. It's like, seriously, people actually do that? 66 different sizes of condoms. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Like, <laughs> is there that many penis sizes out there? Uh, whatever. And and vegan latex. <laughs> that won't work. I don't even know what the fuck that is. I don't know either. What well, is that? Why why would latex not be vegan? Um, all right. So so the, the oh the STI cases. Because okay. actual latex isn't like biodegradable. It's plastic. Yeah, but I mean, there's no animal product in it. Right, so it's not natural. So it's vegan. So it's vegan by by nature. I mean, it's. Uh, well, yeah, because it's. Because yeah, it's I not an animal it, product. It's not gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> Probably <laughs> I trust not. It. Oh God. So anyway, that story that I linked you. Yeah, I got it. Okay, oh, good. Oh, is that the other one? Is... This is a different one. Okay. The buffalo. Oh, the buffalo. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta play the video to see what the guy did first, because he's a fucking moron. And the guy should have been fucking ass butted by the buffalo in the fucking off the side of the road. Over exactly. a cliff, probably. You know, because it's like, dude, you don't go there to view the wildlife, and just because you got a fucking couple beers in you, you're gonna bring out this take on this fucking huge rejected buffalo that's just living its life, and you stupid fuck come along <laughs> want to fuck with it. You're dumb. You're dumb, dude. Yeah. So they arrested him today because Cause he's he an idiot. He what he did. Because he's a dumbass. Basically, he fucked with government property. Oh, you know? well, can't be having so that. It's a national park, right? He fucked with government property at Yellowstone, and he got arrested today for doing it, which he should have. But actually, I think he should have got a boot over the fucking cliff. Why the buffalo? That would have been better justice than just getting arrested by the authorities. Sure. That's a dumbass. All right, that's why. Okay. All right, there's the buffalo walking between the cars. 
And there's the idiot in the street over there. That's a big buffalo, too. It's not no small little buffalo. <laughs> That's a good 1,500 pounds on the hoof right yeah. there. Yeah. 1,500 pounds. Oh, it weighs the guy by, what, five times or something? Ten Let's times? hope. <laughs> Probably six. Uh... Well, he, he gets out of his car. No one else is out of their car. <laughs> Idiot. The guy's like, what? The buffalo's like, what the fuck, dude? Are you fucking kidding me right now? Look at now? you. Look at me. I'm, I'm a buffalo. You're a moron. <laughs> right. See, on the side of the road, looks like it's a cliff, right? On the left side? Yeah, there? yeah. He should have fucking booted his ass right out the fucking cliff. He should have. But he gave the guy a break for whatever reason. You know. <laughs> you know. Uh, like, you've got this 15... That, that buffalo weighs as much as that car does right now. Right, right. I mean, come on. Oh. So, so they arre- let's be moronic at Yellowstone. So Another, at, Yellowstone at least they, at least they arrested. Person. At least they arrested the guy. Right. You know, it's like don't fuck with wildlife, dude. I mean, it's just like the death story last year, Graham from Yellowstone. The baby bison being rescued. Right, rescued. They, they grabbed the bison and put it in their fucking car. Oh yeah, yeah. that's good for the bison. Yeah. Take it out of his natural habitat. Jeez. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my god. I think those people got arrested too or fined or something. They got fined, I think. You know? Yeah. They yeah. did get that, that bison back, but. Oh my god. <laughs> Come on, people. Are you fucking. Yes, I know the answer to the question. Are you idiotic? Yes. Yes, yes, they are. They are idiotic. Are. <laughs> yes, they are idiotic, and that's oh, all she God. wrote. And some of us just the brain did not develop properly, and there was like there was some of the receptors don't add up. If you had crazy ass parents or something, or some weird ass fucking upbringing, you know, not all the connections get made. Right. You know. So you got people like that. Let's think they can take on some bison. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Uh, okay, buddy. Have another beer. Or another cocktail. Right. That dude's lucky his ass didn't get thrown off the edge of a cliff. Anyway, I wanted to talk about that because that was like the end of the week, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God. Oh God. I tell you, man, people are just fucking morons. Let's <sighs> see if I have anything else bookmarked. Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. Yeah, this one is not good, and Grimner says he's aware of this, this phenomenon. Because he grew up in California, in San Diego. The red algae, the toxic red algae. That it's seriously sad, people. Manatees are dying, fish are dying, it's crazy, it's not good. Um, but Grimm says it's a natural, ph- well, it's not really a natural phenomenon. It, it is, is natural. Phenomenon. It's absolutely natural. Oh, it is natural. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, there's that. Um, let me find a different story on this because this one is going to play a video. But anyway, Miami, thousands of fish, eels, and turtles are dying, and manatees. Sometimes as far as the eye can see in parts of southwest Florida, just this week, one of several lifeless manatees was pulled from the water. The suspected culprit... Oh, see? Damn video. Anyway, um, just this week, one of several lifeless manatees was pulled from the water. The suspected culprit is a toxic algae bloom known as Red Tide. Ozzy Fisher has been fishing gu- a fishing guide in the area for more than 20 years and has already seen cancellations. It really stinks. Imagine if you paid $5,000 to come here on vacation and you tell your wife and your three-year-old to go to the beach and breathe the sin. You can't do that. It's bad. The toxins can also be harmful to humans, causing respiratory illnesses for some beachgoers. So anyway, it's not good. I mean... You say it's natural, though, Grandma. Yes. And what is the cause of it? If you know. I don't... And what is the cause of it? 
Um, it's just it's just yeah, it's just algae. It's just a certain type of algae that grows when it's when it's okay. warm. Okay. See, up here we have the blue green algae, and they've shut beaches down a couple of times this summer already because they say it's toxic algae, and, it, and a lot of the blue green, the blue, the green is natural, but the blue part comes from the toxic runoff from farms farm pesticides or whatever chemicals they use in a farm. You know what I mean? Right. So that's why they shut it down. But I remember being a kid, and there's always been algae. It wasn't like maybe the blue-green stuff, but it looks green. But it's never a good idea like swimming it. I mean, it's not going to kill you, but it's not, you know. Yeah. So anyway, that's sad. I, I just don't like that. Seeing wildlife dying like that. No, it's it's you know, but it's just nature. That's just nature. You're seeing there was a killer so looking off the Florida coast. Of What's that? You're saying it's a natural scheme of things. Yeah, nature kills nature a lot. Right, it happens. I mean, look at the wildfires going on in Reading. I mean, what do you think about that? What do you think? Does you think that was natural? Um. Well, there's evidence to the contrary, but. Uh, there's, there's evidence those were set by by. Is there? Ever, do you have a link? No, I don't. Oh, okay. I, I didn't save it. I don't think I saved it. Did you see that it said that? Well, the, a lot of things showing that they're not natural fires by the heat that but, they're burning at, and right. like, like it shows like houses basically cut in half by the by these beams coming out of okay. air, coming out of airplanes. Government doing it. To, to, okay, so to, to chase people out of California, like last year, the remember we did the yeah. fire. We, maybe it was this fall or something. The story is last year where we said, those, and I even agreed. I posted a video about DEWs, and I posted it was a lady being inter or that spoke about what happened in her house. She did not think it was a natural fire. She definitely thought it was something else. And I believe that, too. They're trying to drive people out of that state, for sure. I mean, they're burning homes, like, a lot of homes down. A whole town. I mean, basically, Redding's fucked up. Oh, they want that land, absolutely. That, that's Right, Redding's that, fucked up. That, that's prime land. Right. And right. it's, like, well, it's I, so I, sad, because... I didn't save any links I, to it. I mean, up here, we worry about fire, but when you live in California, that's a real concern. I mean, sure. if you live in the mountains and you have all that dry shit all around you, because they don't, they're in a drought. They've been in a drought for a long time. Yeah. That's probably planned, too, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, it's just like, I just, I, I, I feel bad for people that live there at the same time. I, if I was going to speak from any, to anybody from health, I'd say, get the fuck out. No doubt. Say, get the fuck out. You're, being, you're an experiment. Yeah. Just get out of there. All right. And it's it's sad because it's 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 a beautiful state. There are so many parts about California that are absolutely fucking breathtakingly beautiful. You know what I'm sure. saying? Sure. And it's like, why fuck it up? You know. I suppose they figure it's gonna fucking the big ones gonna hit. And that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or who knows what they think? I don't know, but. They want people out of there. I know that. Oh, sure. They want the land. They're that's making, all. That's, you know. For what? For them. For profit. <laughs> you know, those people that are there, they can't make any profit off them. Right. The wineries and shit. They're like, fuck Whoever, you and your wineries. That, these, people you that'll, this shit. these people that have lived there for generations. They, there's no more. There's no money, money to be made off of them. Right. Exactly. Yep. So they gotta force them out. And then you know they could price it whatever they want or do whatever they want. They call it a natural disaster. Oh, a sure. Natural disaster. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's hear some more music here. All right. All right. Let's do that. And where's my camera? Right there. All I'm just right. babbling. I mean, it was a full moon. It was a hectic week. It was like a fucking hellish week. And it's like unwind and just fucking chillax and is talk today? about whatever. But you know, we do talk about things that are current. But oh, yeah, we're half moon now. At the same time, we're like 
Whatever. It's Friday. Okay. Well, it's <laughs> half moon. Half moon today. Tonight. And half moon. Yeah. Yep. All right then, people. All right. Enjoy. Freak the fuck out. What? <laughs> I said freak the fuck out. Okay. <laughs> Will do. Beth Hart. Wow, this is fun. Yipper, that there was the infamous String Dusters doing Just Like Heaven, a cover of a Cure tune there for the Moose Girl. Before that was Charlie Parr and Peaceful Valley, another one for the Moose Girl. And we kicked it off with Beth Hart and I Don't Need No Doctor. <laughs> nice. Ooh, lightning. I don't need no freaking doctor. Who doesn't? Who does need a doctor? No you one know, needs a doctor. I'm, 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 I'm kind of looking at this, and you, you know, the doctor, I, right? It's doctor feel good. You hear what I'm saying? Doctor feel good. Uh, but uh, <laughs> hey, hey, stop that. All right. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm thinking that Beth Hart was better back in the days when she was on drugs. Um, I mean, she's oh, great. Really? She's great now. She's a great talent. She's got a great voice. Oh yeah, she's good. But. Um, just her her her, her attitude. style, yeah, up on stage when, when <laughs> back in the old days, and you could tell the difference. You know, she's she's definitely cleaned up her act now. Oh yeah. As as far as uh, her appearance and just her, you know, the way the way she is, but uh, she right she, right. She was a far more hard. <laughs> Stop that stuff. Uh, um, hard rocking chick back in the day. So, but you know, weren't we all? Weren't we fucking all? <laughs> no more that shit, but dude, hard rocky. Ben Wow. All hard rocky. We all thought we were fucking wannabe rock stars. We thought we were fucking hot shit. Hell yeah, we, we were. We thought we were it. <laughs> <laughs> we thought we were the shit, dude. We were. We were the shit. You know, we were. But, you know, we shouldn't talk in past tense, because we still are. We're still the shit, man. God damn right. Never lose the fucking shit. Even if you get older, you don't lose the shit. You know, <laughs> if you got it, you got it, you know? Yeah. So yep. don't ever think that you don't have it. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm not kidding, though. Uh, I laugh, but I'm not kidding. Not. I know I'm being not. serious, too. I know you're not. Uh, yeah, um, I, I want to talk about this here a little bit. Okay. Um, you know about the 3D printed guns? Yes. All right. And you know some some judges in various states have decided that, well, one judge said, okay, um, it's it's basically a free speech thing to, talk, to be able to pass around these, uh, uh, the the plans to, to, to 3D yeah, print these yeah, guns. Yeah, to make this gun. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 yep. and, and many, many states have come out and, oh, no, they, they, we, we can't let people do that. And um, they like they were going to somehow prevent people from passing those plans around, which were already on the Internet. <laughs> so so comes this story. Right, from... they're already there. They're all there for people. People are making BB-8 and all different kinds of shit well, out of this. Whatever. So anyway, this story from Washington Times. Judges order backfires as activists rush to share 3D gun designs. Right. Active. Oh, yeah. Just got to say the word activist. I, I don't consider myself an activist of any kind. Me but either. What I'm the definitely, fuck? No, I've don't definitely, say activist. I've definitely been sharing these, these, these print right. gun designs. Anyway, a judge's attempt to halt the spread of blueprints... <laughs> halt the spread. <laughs> they, it's like they've never heard of the internet before. They've never used right, the internet. They, they have no idea. <laughs> anyway, to, to halt the spread of blueprints for 3D printed guns backfired Wednesday as plans spread across the internet, posted and shared by people who said they were determined to strike a blow for free speech, to protect gun rights, or just to thumb their nose at government. I'm, I'm for all of that. Uh, activists took to Twitter and Facebook to share links. I went to, well, uh, not Facebook, but Twitter and Minds and, and, and Freedoms Network and I think Reddit too. Uh, anyway, wherever. Um, 
to share links where the plans could be found on file sharing service right. sites on the dark web. One you're criminals the, Ram, you're criminals. Well, one website, codeisfreespeech.com, posted eight sets of files and reported more than 100,000 hits and nearly oh, one, and no. a half, one and a half terabytes of data downloading by 6 a.m. Oh, Wednesday. No. Just in the past 48 hours, I would be shocked if hundreds of thousands of people didn't possess these files, said Brandon Combs, president of Firearms po Policy Coalition, which posted the data to codesfreespeech.com. Uh, in a flurry of legal activity late Tuesday, the judge ordered the federal government to reverse itself and reimpose Obama-era export restrictions that limit availability of files. That order was aimed at stopping Defense Distributed, a Texas-based organization, uh, from <laughs> from posting the blueprints to the website defcad.com. Cody Wilson, the site's founder, complied, but much of the rest of the Internet stepped in to fill the void. <laughs> yeah, you could stop me from putting them out there, but we already put them out there. People already Wait, have uh, them. It's already out there, dude. <laughs> uh. Do your human duty and share, said one Twitter user who linked the files to the file sharing site uh, on another file sharing site. You cannot stop the flow of information, tweeted another user. Uh, Mr. Combs and Duddle3, I guess, I don't know, uh, each said it, his bandwidth, you shot off the charts with the number of downloads. I've seen this stuff all over, and I suspect by the end of the next couple of days, there is going to be a saturation. They're not going to be able to do anything about it. Uh, the technology of 3D printing and plans would allow people to access the right to machinery and materials to manufacture a working, untraceable firearm in secret. Oh, no, he has a, a secret gun that the government doesn't know about. How horrible. Anyway, the concept has existed for decades, but has recently begun to reach the mainstream, plowing new ground in the debate of over gun rights and government regulations. I'll, I'll let you read the rest for yourself, because, um, well, you, you, you may want to or not, or not need to. I, I don't know. Um, did I put that? I already put that in there. Okay. I'll just paste it over here. Um, and, and then here, for y'all, sharing, 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 sharing. This is the site where you get all the plans. They got plans over here. They got plans for uh, machining instructions for the 80% AR-15 lower, the complete AR-15, the AR-10, a Ruger 1022, a 1911, a VZ-58, a Beretta 925S, a Liberator download. And uh, there's a checksum there that you may want to use if you uh, don't trust the site or, where, or the data that's up on the site. So <laughs> go there, get, get your uh, get your get your gun 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 things, and uh, maybe you know somebody with a 3D printer. Maybe you got one of yourself. Wh whatever, it's either either way, um, it's it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Uh, people should should be able to go out there and, and, and share this information. It's none of the government's business whether or not you have uh, a way to defend yourself against intruders and or the government, which are intruders. <laughs> yes, they are. What about ADH? You should be able to, to make your own home rocket-propelled grenades and your own tanks, as you were talking about. Um, and and uh, whatever whatever... Whatever is available, you should be able to have. Print, print a tank. Yeah, I, that might be a little problem. I mean, yeah, that could be a problem. I, I don't know that the materials that you can print are really up to spec. That's way big. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where's my, where's my deal here? Okay, this, this. Um, come on now, come on. What's going on here? I'm getting like some lag going on on my my browser for whatever reason. I don't know why. Oh, that happens to me all the time. Okay. Anyway, this here. <laughs> and I guess this is a good time to talk about lag because, hey, what's going on? Uh, on motherboard.vice.com. And you may, may be aware of this. This may be happening to you or me. High-speed Internet is causing widespread sleep deprivation. <laughs> yeah, 
think? <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna it, it says here, first of its kind study. Really? I, I thought they were talking about this back in the 90s. Oh, anyway, uh, yeah. I'm for, for, for first of its kind study establishes a ca ca causal link between broadband internet and sleep deprivation. Uh, sleep deprivation is an increasing problem in many developed countries, which can result in impaired cognition and a number of serious individual and societal consequences. Lack of sleep has been linked to, and, and, and this is always the way they go at it, economically, billions of dollars in lost revenue. Up to one-sixth of all traffic accidents in the U.S. and increased risk of chronic disease. The reason for this chronic sleep shortage is due to a combination of factors. Longer working hours, stress, and interpersonal relationships have all been blamed for the widespread insomnia. Now, a new study claims that high-speed Internet access is at least partly at fault. The study, published Friday in the Journal of Economic Behavior and Organization and funded by the European Research Council, suggests that high-speed Internet access is causing people to lose up to 25 minutes, really, 20, up, up to 25 minutes of sleep per night. I'd say two, three hours a like night. like four hours. Yeah, two, three, four hours a night they're losing. Yeah. Um, compared to what those with without high-speed Internet get. And the study, uh, it, it is the first study to casually link broadband access to sleep deprivation. Um, yeah, no, I remember when, when I just first got internet just on dial-up. Um, right. I, man, I remember that. I'd stay up all night on the damn thing. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I was there <laughs> chatting in the chat room. Fucking and, right, right. Um, well, MI or whatever the fuck was called. M I R C or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I R C yeah, I started out. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, so uh I, I don't know how this is the first of its kind study because they were talking about it back then. Right. And, so they and, they should have claimed that. And and then and then um you know, like online gaming when I when I when I got in, <laughs> into playing Quake online. Right. Oh boy, I, I I could just not sleep or or just uh, doing coding or whatever. You know, and you, and you wouldn't necessarily be doing your coding online, but you'd be you know looking no. up all kinds of right. different stuff online all the time to to complete your code. Um, so, right. <laughs> first of its kind study. Yeah, I don't think so. But, uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> oh, this is from yesterday, and, and it's something you should know if you don't know, and I think you probably know, but it's from yesterday. Fifty-four years ago yesterday, government and media create and spread fake news <laughs> to start the Vietnam War. Uh, duh. That was, that was the Gulf of Tonkin situation. Yep. So I don't really yep. need to I don't really need to go through any of it with you, but uh, that was yesterday, 54 oh. years ago. Does that make you feel old? Oh yeah, it does. Because you're what? Kind of. You're you're, you're I'm what? 51. 51. So before you were even born, right? The fake news was. And it pisses me right. Being spread out there. Like I said, I've had to deal with this shit all my whole my whole life. Yeah. Yeah. You know. All this war and all this fucking bullshit. Oh, yeah. This fucking lies. <laughs> Fuck. Great. Wonderful. Uh, so there you go. F f 54 years. It's, that's an awfully long time. Yeah, it is. Half a century. Over half a century. Yep. But then, again, according to this what if article, which I, I, don't, I don't know how many people, how many of y'all out there remember a guy by the name of Chuck Baldwin. I do. I you may, remember he Chuck Baldwin a, from the what 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 he was? Oh, with? libertarian. No, he wasn't libertarian. He was with the uh, Constitution Party. Oh yeah, that, that's yeah. that's who he was with, Chuck Baldwin. Okay. Anyway, he posted this thing up. It's on Russia oh, in God. Russia Insider. Oh, God. RussiaInsider dot com. What if everything we've been told about recent history is a lie? 
<laughs> behind the war on behind the war on terror is a strategic plan crafted decades in advance to redraw the map in the Middle East. 9/11 was a false flag operation based on Muslims, or blamed on Muslims, not based on. Um, so the the author is prominent American Christian conservative who was a presidential candidate for the paleoconservative Constitution Party in 2008 when he was endorsed by Ron Paul. He is the pastor of Liberty Fellowship, a non-denominational church in Montana, and he is a popular radio host, really? I've never heard him, and columnist. His weekly sermon, oh, it's, it's a Jesus thing, so... Anyway, he is a relentless foe of neoconservatism and frequently consider, criticizes neocon hostility towards Russia. His views are representative of an influential and substantial part of Trump's popular support. Really? Punk Trump's popular support? He has that? All right. Anyway. <laughs> so this is an archive of an article. What if everything we've been told about 9-11 is a lie? What if it wasn't 19 Muslim terrorist hijackers that flew those planes into the Twin Towers in the Pentagon? What if the Muslims had nothing whatsoever to do with the attacks on 9-11? What if everything we've been told about the reasons we invaded two sovereign nations, Afghanistan and Iraq, is a lie? What if the 17-year-old never-ending war on terror in the Middle East is a lie? What if our young soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, uh, who have given their lives in America's war on terror, died for a lie? What if George W. Bush, Barack Obama, and Donald Trump have been nothing but controlled toadies for an international global conspiracy that hatched the attacks on 9-11 as nothing more than a means to institute a perpetual war on terror for purposes that have nothing to do with America's national security. Would the American people want to know? Would the truth even matter to them? The sad reality is that the vast majority of Americans who would read the above paragraph would totally dismiss every question he raised as being unrealistic and impossible, or even nutty. Why is that? Have they studied and researched the questions? No! Have they given any serious thought to the questions? No! They have simply swallowed the government mainstream media version of these events, hook, line, and sinker. It is totally amazing to me that the same people who say they don't believe the mainstream media and the government, deep state, versions of current events, which is why they voted for and love Donald Trump, have absolutely no reservations about accepting the official story of 9-11 attacks were the work of, a jih of jihadist Muslims and that Americans' war on terror is completely legitimate. These always Trumpers are dead set in their minds that America is at war with Islam, that Trump's bombings of Syria were because President Assad is evil, maniacal monster who gassed his own people, and that Trump's expansion of the war in Afghanistan is totally in the interests of America's national security. But what if all of it is a big, fat lie? What if the Muslims did it? Is, it is. It is. <laughs> nothing to do with 9-11. Uh, I'll, I'll let you read the rest because it, it, it's pretty good. Even coming from this guy that I very rarely agreed with on many of his points that he was trying to push across. Uh, Maybe he saw the light. No, I, 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 I think on those topics that I disagreed with him on, which he's not talking about here, he's talking about right. things that I would agree with him on, um, <laughs> he'd still be that way. Like, for example, if... Yeah, if, he's a religion nutter. Yeah, if, if you were caught with pot, he would he would execute you, basically. Um, <laughs> he's a fucking idiot, basically, that... Yeah, he's, he's definitely a religious nutter. Um, yeah, he's a basic <laughs> idiot. But maybe, you know, you, know, you never know... You never know, but I I did want to share that, you know. I, Maybe I, I, someone dosed him or something, you know. You never know. It, 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 it's possible. It's possible. You never know. I'm just saying. You never know. Yeah, you don't know. You don't know. You don't know anything. 
right. All right, we're gonna play some more music right now. Um, okay, let's do that. And, and, and this is something. I hope you guys are having a good night. What? Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, so this this is something here that I'm gonna play for you. Mm -hmm. it, it's three videos by by the the same people. The first okay. one is just like an interview, and it's All this right. girl. The it's, it's a band. It's called the Black Mirrors. Yeah. Okay. Nice. And um, anyway, so so she's gonna tell you how they got where they are, and being that they're not from here, mm -hmm. adds a little more interest to the story. So here it is, oh. uh, the Black Mirror set. All right, there you have it, the Black Mirrors out of Belgium. Uh, that was that track there was called "Till the Land Wind Blows." The one before that was called "Burning Warriors." Sorry about the overdriven audio on that, but you know what happens sometimes on these videos. Right. And we kick right. it off with a little uh, interview of her talking about how the Native American culture has affected her and her music, her style. Um, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, for somebody from Belgium, you know. That's, yeah, no, that's really cool. She looks native. She looks like she has native heritage. You know, she she reminds me of Grace Potter. Yeah, she's yeah, yeah. And yeah. Grace is back. Grace is back. Where'd she go? Yeah. Well, she had a baby. Oh right, right, right. She had a kid. And now she's back touring, and she posted a thing today on Facebook that she's happy and everything's good. Right on. Yeah, so it's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I I mean I know I'm a I sound like a little fucking fan girl, but I am a fan girl. I'm not afraid of being you know, a fan girl for some of my favorite artists. It's like they make it happen for me. It works for me. It makes me feel good, and I'm not gonna fucking complain. You know. I don't blame you none. Yeah, you know it's like it's my thing. It's like that song. It's your thing. Do what you're going to do. Right. <laughs> I can't tell you who you talk to. Whatever. 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 You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it's your fucking thing. Do what you're going to do. You know? Yeah. That's how I try to live my life. That's the motto. You know, that I try to live up to, I guess. Or, you know, it's like, fuck it. <laughs> sure. You know, I mean, it's just, being mainstream is fucking boring as fuck. A rerun? No, we're not a rerun. That's how fucking, <laughs> yeah, but I do feel like a broken record many times doing this show. We've been doing this show, like, over, like, almost ten years, and it's like, we keep saying the same things, but it, we have to, because... Everything, the lies have been ingrained so long that we, it's like you have to undo them. You know? And I even get stuck sometimes in the old way of thinking, you know? Sure. Because it's been ingrained in your, and forced down your fucking throat. Yeah. You know? And, and then you find out that most of, or, okay, 99.9% .9 of it is a fucking lie. Bullshit. And I'll get to more of that in a minute. But yeah, well, you might as well get to it right now because. No, well, you know. but before I do, I got this one lined up. So. Okay. Well, let's hear it. For any Reddit <laughs> redditors, do we have redditors here? I'm yeah. not a redditor. No. But I'm we not. do have a lot. Not of, even a hard on Twitter. I mean, come on. But we do have a lot of redditors, and. Yep. Yep. And and here we go. Reddit hacked. All user data from 2007 and earlier is accessed. Reddit team is, co Reddit team is cooperating with law enforcement and taking steps to further secure the site. So uh, basically that's all i got to tell you, um, is that Reddit has been hacked, and if you've been on the site since 2007 or before, which I have, um, then you should go in there right away and... Uh, First off, change your password, and second off, uh, uh, in enable 2FA, which I did. I use a, a program called WinAuth, 
uh, to to do that with. <laughs> Juan Taco, you're exactly right. I think I remember that somebody used to do a daily show with the same plate. Yeah, it was the same news every day, every day, every day. And I, I could do a story. I could do another version or another episode of RLM News tomorrow, and it would be basically all the same stories from five, six, ten years ago. Because exactly, it would be the same. Because, because the like, stories, that's why I feel like a broken record. The stories don't change. No, uh, they don't. It's just the same shit, different day, all di the time. Di different faces, different names, same shit. Uh, but yeah. anyway, so there, there. If you're a redditor, um, bear that in mind and and uh, get on over to your Reddit account. I, and I, I rarely, rarely ever posted anything on there. Um, but uh, whatever. Yeah, you know. Okay. All these so, threats and all this shit is like fucking a. You can't. They make it confusing for a reason. They make it so you can't keep up with it. You know, it's another reason they want to stress us all out. Oh, you're gonna have identity fraud. You're gonna have this. It's just like really. Come on, shut it off. Shut the fuck up, dude. I barely have any credit cards. I barely have credit cards. If I have any, it's probably like five hundred dollars. You know, it's like, you hear all these people that have, like, 60 grand in credit card debt. It's like, what the fuck are you thinking? You're dumb. Exactly. You're stupid. You know, you're, you're working. You know, it's like, I can really keep up with my own, the, the bills I have to keep up with. With, like, like shelter, food, heat. I live in Wisconsin. God, I have heat. Yeah. I know this. I have to, or I will perish. Absolutely. If I do not have heat, I will fucking perish. So right. if I don't want to pay for heat, I can move down to rest and go and pay for air conditioning nine months out of the year. Sure, sure. You know, all same diff, right? Yeah. The energy bills. Okay, well, let me get a little bit like, of this. Let me, I mean, let me get a little bit of this article in okay. here. Okay, all right. Okay, sorry. Before we run out of time. Okay, yep. You better... <laughs> from from the Future of Freedom Foundation, uh, one of their authors, John Whitehead, poses this article to you. The deep state is real, and Trump is its latest tool. <laughs> <laughs> Be, behind the ostensible government sits an enthroned, an invisible government, owing no allegiance and no and no acknowledging and acknowledging no responsibility to the people. That was a Theodore Roosevelt quote. Um, there are those who would have you believe that President Trump is an unwitting victim of the deep state. And then there are those that insist the deep, deep state is a figment of a conspiratorial mind. Don't believe it. The deep state, a.k.a. the police state, a.k.a. the military-industrial complex, a.k.a. the surveillance state, does indeed exist, and Trump, far from being its sworn, sworn enemy, is its latest tool. When in doubt, follow the money trail. It always points the way. Every successive president, starting with Franklin D. Roosevelt, has been bought, lock, stock, yes. and barrel, lock, stock, yes. and barrel, and made to dance to the tune of that very deep state. Yes. Even Dwight D. Eisenhower, re retired five-star army general, turned yep. president who warned against the disastrous rise of misplaced power by the military-industrial complex. See, was, it's a weird, Graham, because they fucking put generals in place of, like, president because they did it with Ulysses S. Grant, too. Because they're heroes. Right, they're heroes, so they're going <laughs> to be accepted. And that way we can feed them the lies, and they won't even know it. Anyway, so even Eisenhower was complicit and contributed yep. to the build-up of the military's yep. role in dictating national and international policy. It's a puppet position, President. It's a puppet position. Enter Donald Trump, the candidate who swore yep. to drain the swamp in D.C. How do you do, D? Instead of putting an end to the corruption, however, Trump has paved the way for lobbyist corporations, military-industrial complex, and the rest of the deep state, also refer, referred yeah, to as the... Yeah, he's hunting wolves all right again. Also referred to as the Seventh Floor Group, uh, to feast on the carcass of the dying American public. 
apart from the tweets that are a little more than sound and fury, Trump is not a man who is raging against the machine. He's too much part of the machine. <laughs> anyway, I'll, I'll let you read the rest of this for yourself. I don't have time. But, um, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it is yeah, what it is. You can see these people that, like, they're like sheep to the slaughter, for lack of a better term. But these people that show up for these Trump rallies, their brains fucked up. Oh, they're, they're just totally brainwashed. They're fucking totally fucking soaked in the, you know, they don't, you know, they they truly, they're, they're actually scary. To oh, me, they're sure. like zombie-like, almost. I mean, ain't, ain't they're no doubt about it. Scary. And then the other side, though, the ones that are against them, the so-called Democrats, they're no fucking better, dude. No, they're the same people. They're just a fucking psycho. They're, they're no different whatsoever. No, there's no... <laughs> if this doesn't tell you something, I don't know what does. Exactly. But it's the same behavior. And they, they, they truly believe there's a difference between the two parties. And it's just like, dude, it's a fucking illusion. Yep, Goldman Sachs. There you You're go, a dumbass. Gilbert. You're a dumbass. <laughs> You're buying into this hook, line, and sinker, and you don't even know you're being fucking duped. Right. All right I mean, we, I, we feel gotta, so, we gotta... I feel bad for them on a level, but at the same time, no. No, no. Because no. the Wake information's up. out there. Wake up and I mean, smell the on, coffee. I your fucking horizon for once. Fucking think outside your goddamn box that you've been programmed into, you bitch. Absolutely. You know? All right, well, like, we got to do our last... we got to do the last set here. I mean, are you happy? Why do you get so angry? They want you to get angry. You're get you're giving them the exact result they want. That's why they have this illusion of the two party system. Yeah. You know? Come on. Don't feed the beast. Hello? Yeah. This is what I'm talking about. Don't buy into their shit. Sorry, Graham, but it's been almost ten years we knew the show, you know, it's I like know. fuck it. I you know all, all stops now. <laughs> you know? I know I know, I know I I I totally agree. <laughs> Fucked up, motherfuckers. I totally agree, but we got to do our last set here, so. Ten years we've been doing this show and saying the same fucking thing. I know, I agree, I agree, but we got to do our last set. All right, here we go. Okay, music. <laughs> Reverend Peyton's big damn band. Yep. Alrighty, alrighty, alright. That's the third different version of Black Betty by the Pat Travers band that I have now in my collection of Black Betty covers. Um, so, <laughs> great job there, Pat and the boys. Uh, before that, we had Jimi Hendrix doing, or the Jimi Hendrix experience, I should specify, with Foxy Lady. And we kicked it off with the... <laughs> Reverend Peyton's big damn band and raise a little hell. Oh boy, fun stuff, good stuff. One and all. Um, yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Thanks everybody for tuning in. You guys are awesome. Have a good weekend. Yep, thanks um, everybody. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Which kind of leaves you open. Um, <laughs> oh, leaves you pretty much open. <laughs> yeah. uh, so have a good one. See, I don't, I don't think there's any dark table tomorrow, but uh, I'll be on That's Sunday not. morning uh, at noon, noon Eastern with the Blues, and yep. the trivia in the chat, and then Hal will be on in the afternoon. And, right. um, and oh yeah, by the way, in case you all forgot, today was Grammy Mary's birthday. Yes, so, it was. Uh, happy birthday, Grammy! Happy birthday, Grammy! You came with you. We love, love you. you. All right. Uh, we'll love that, you. That's all. That's all, I guess. We all love you. Yes, we do. <laughs> Peace. Peace.